Hey guys, what's going on? Fran London. Hey, you guys know what to do is always like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Let's get into today's video. So we've got quite a bit of news to go through here in this video and there's some good stuff towards the end. But we're starting off with star Chelsea midfield Joe could be on their way out as Blues plot summer exits. And as you can see pictured here, this is about Ross Barkley and Jorginho. And this is according to football.land and Chelsea could see Ross Barkley and Jorginho leave the club this summer. Now, this one's interesting to me. We know that Ross Barkley is sort of just a squad player at Chelsea. He's never really been much more than that. Showing some great glimpses this season, but also in general hasn't... He's not like a, a guaranteed starter in, you know, the top six teams or whatever in the Premier League. You know, it's, he's, he's not that guy. And Jorginho was brought into fit Sarri's system basically he's Sarri's right hand man and doesn't really fit in with Frank Lampard's style of play and all that sort of stuff so it makes sense for both of them to go um, whether we'll be able to get a good enough fee for both of them in this transfer window given the current financial climate I'm not too sure but either way I'm fine with both of them leaving um, Ross Barkley I could see going to like a, a lesser Premier League team like a Crystal Palace back to Everton maybe one of these sort of deals you know they're below us but they're still a Premier League side Jorginho definitely I think will be going back to Italy I would not be surprised at all to be seeing that one happening and all in all I think I'm fine with this one happening they're definitely on our sale list is basically what this article is getting to they're not necessarily you know currently sought after by many uh, clubs but they are available to be picked up should anyone want them and i'm fine with this you think like okay we lose barkley and Jorginho, they're two of our midfielders normally you think that and you're like, okay you two midfielders down you got to replace them but you got to think we still have Mason Mount, Kante, Kovacic, Kai Havert, Ziyech can play in their central midfield, Ruben Loftus-Cheek, um, Billy Gilmore, Conor Gallagher coming up, Ethan Abdu can play in the midfield as well. We've got a lot of players that are available to play in that central midfield role so is it necessary to have them? I don't think so. I think we've got such a versatile squad at the moment that we don't even necessarily need them involved. So if we can get a nice chunk of money for selling both of them, I personally would be fine with them. I'm interested to see what you guys think on this one because I know there's probably quite a lot of people that think Jorginho can stay and I'd be fine if he does stay. You know, I got no problem with Jorginho, um, but I don't think we necessarily need him in the squad and that's sort of my take on this. then Chelsea have made another signing but it's not one crazy one like we've had over the past few days slash week. Chelsea signed teenage goalkeeper Sharman Lowe after getting checks, tick of approval. Basically this guy is a 17 year old goalkeeper as you can see here his name is Teddy Sharman Lowe. Uh, he uh, plays for League One club Burton Albion and is currently going to be heading back there on a season long loan I believe. So he signed with us but we're going to send him back there. Um, only in the League One of course and he's only 17 so by the time he gets back to us he will be 18 years old and do you really trust an 18 year old keeper in your sticks if he's good enough i suppose you do but i don't think we'll be seeing this guy in the first team for any time soon possibly he could be another situation of we've bought him we've seen his talent and we're going to loan him back to like burton then eventually he'll go up to like maybe a championship club then a premier league club or he'll go abroad and he'll do bits out there and he will just eventually be sold on uh, for a profit the fee is undisclosed we don't know how much this one's gone through for but my guess would be Chelsea have signed a promising young talent potentially might come through to the first team but that could be years down the line and we'll, we'll almost certainly make a profit given that he's already you know, he's now come to Chelsea we can send him out to bigger clubs and if he performs even averagely at like a, a, a Bundesliga club or a, a Serie A club something like that then his value will be much more than what we've paid for him from League One Club Burton Albion so good bit of business on this one I'm sure he is a great talent I don't know anything about him so I can't judge on it but if he's got checks take of approval then I'm sure he's pretty decent Then we have some news. Chelsea Edward Mendy talks reach a crucial stage which has been reported by Matt Law football editor at Sportsmall here 
And you can see here, according to journalist Kevin Palmer, talks over a move to Stamford Bridge have reached a crucial stage and the stopper could now be on his way to Stamford Bridge. So it looks like this deal is going to be happening. We, we know Chelsea have had interest in him recently. Um, the reports were coming out that they were saying that they demand 30 million for him or at least 30 million for him, which was quite unreasonable if you ask me. I'm pretty sure they paid 2 million for him a year ago um, and they are now demanding 30 million. That's what his value is apparently. That's obviously because they know Chelsea have money and they're going to try and exploit that, which I guess they have every right to. But let's be reasonable with his value here. I don't think he's valued at 30 million in any reasonable person's mind. Um, we bid around 18 million was the last that I was, under, uh, was understood. And I think that's probably a pretty fair price, if anything, quite a lot, given that he went for two million a year ago. But I could see us paying it. It's not too much money for Chelsea, so I could see that one happening. I wonder what Chelsea have offered now, given that we've reached a crucial stage. To me, that means that a fee is like, yeah, they're, they're accepting a fee and maybe we're now discussing with him a contract or some sort of, you know, advanced thing past, like, we want your player, how much do we have to pay? So... Chelsea might well be bringing Edouard Mendy in, which is good. He's a tall keeper. Um, in terms of, like, is he the best keeper in the world? No, I've discussed this before. He is just going to be someone that is, like, happy to be a backup. Will definitely challenge Kepa for a first-team uh, spot. And if he does break into the first team, he should be able to perform fairly averagely across the season. And that should save us, like... 10, 15 goals across a season, which is quite big. That gains you a lot of points. So... On this one, I'm fine with it. Um, there are also alternatives to this one, which, as we check out on the next article, Chelsea have been offered goalkeepers Andre Onana and Alfonso Areola, but they are also in talks with Ren to sign Eduard Mendy. So we've been offered Andre Onana and uh, Alfonso Areola, but apparently our interest is firmly on Mendy. I think with Onana, a lot of people are very eager for us to go for him instead. I can understand why, but Edouard Mendy, I believe, is taller um, and also I think he's more willing to be a backup. I think Ariola might be about 28 years old. I might be wrong on that one. 27, maybe. Um, so a little bit older in that regard as well. Um, but in general, I think that the, the thing is, Edward Mendy will be happy to be a backup and can push Kepa. And if Kepa doesn't improve, will then fit into the first team for a year, maybe two. And then we can see someone like maybe Andre Onana, probably someone bigger than that, a Jan Oblak or a Donnarumma possibly, coming into Chelsea and fixing up the goalkeeper position for a long time, especially if it's Donnarumma because the guy is so young. So... Like I said, fine with this one. Let me know what you guys think. I know there's a lot of people that would say get Onana over this guy. Um, I think I'm okay with Mendy, though. That's just my take. Let me know what you think. So then we have a little bit of news on a departure. Chelsea will offer Mishu Batshuayi a new contract before loading him out this season to avoid losing him on a free next summer. Crystal Palace, West Brom and Newcastle are keen. So him going to any one of them, I can see that happening. Um, like I said with Ross Barkley, I feel like they're at a similar level. You know, I feel like they're the kind of player that can do well at those sorts of clubs, but can they hack it at like a, a Chelsea if they went to like a, a Man United or Liverpool? Can they hack it there? Not so much, it doesn't seem. So I'd be happy for him to go out on a loan. We're obviously trying to make him go somewhere, perform for a year or so, and then sell him on for a decent fee because no one really wants him given his current form at Chelsea. Um, I'm not willing to pay a decent amount for him at least. So this one I'm fine with. It's wise to be giving him a new contract before loading him out. Whether Batshuayi will accept, I don't know because maybe he's just seeing his time at Chelsea and he's just like, you know what, I want to go, man. Like Even if it's on a free and I have to drag this out, I will. Um... But maybe he's just happy of being at Chelsea, the training, the atmosphere, all that sort of stuff. Maybe he's happy, so he's like, yep, yeah, I'll sign the new contract. And then when I come back, we'll look at a permanent move. Fine by me on this one. Newcastle, West Brom or Crystal Palace, I don't care. Just get him out of here. Then Christian Falk gave us an update, but this one is quite funny. He says, our story, Kai Havertz. Havertz is already searching for a house in London, which is good given that he's now going to be living here. Because of Havertz, his mate Timo Werner can imagine to play on the wings, which I guess, I don't know if he's meaning necessarily like he will consistently play on the wings and Havertz is going to be our striker. I don't think that's the case. I think it probably just is sort of implying that Timo's in, yeah, I can I can play on like you know left wing, right wing, whatever for a game if Havertz wants to to sort of slot up front for a game 
something like that um like i said chelsea looking to build a very versatile team so this makes a lot of sense but then this is the big bit mason mount is not happy that he has an expensive rival at his position and obviously that was quite concerning people saw this and they were like nah surely not like everything we know about mason the quote of him saying um his father saying no one's ever made it into the chelsea academy since john terry and then he says I'm going to be the next one. And Mason Mount has got that that work rate, that desire to be a top player. And that alone can carry you far, as well as the fact that he's got the talent to be able to play at the top level of the Premier League at Chelsea. So reading this one, a lot of people were just like, no, nah, like, no way, like, this guy's joking, right? Like, this cannot be the case. And everyone was a little bit worried for a while. But then Tony Mount, this is, like, I can confirm this is um, Mason Mount's father. I've been following him on Twitter for a while. Yeah, um, so this is definitely the right account. And he just replies with a lot of laughing faces and then bull and the poo emoji. So I think we know, obviously, what he's saying there. He's saying that's a load of rubbish. Um, Mason Mount is not unhappy that... Kai Havertz has been brought in he knows he's playing at Chelsea a big club where if you want like the cam roll or the center mid roll or wherever Mason Mount wants to play you're gonna have a fight for it because we're gonna be bringing in the best players to play in those positions and if you're better than them then you have that position but there is no sort of you know Mason Mount played with us for a year therefore he is guaranteed that position for the rest of his life or his career not the case you're gonna have competition and Mason knows that and I don't know where this story came from because we've seen Christian Falk being very reliable on um all the Kai Havertz transfer stories and this one came out of nowhere this is probably one of the few things I've seen him get wrong I haven't seen him get too much uh, wrong so very interesting on this one um, but obviously Mason Mount's dad is the better connection there and he has absolutely said yep yeah, that's a load of rubbish so Mason Mount is not unhappy if you do see this story circulating which I'm sure the tabloids might pick up um, he is happy to be here his own father has pretty much just confirmed it for us so no worries on that regard and I do just want to address something of course I haven't been uploading for the past few days um, I have a health condition as you've seen before um, on my community tab on the YouTube channel um, I was in hospital a few I think about two months ago um, I have a health condition that sort of does just sort of randomly spring up on me and it absolutely wipes me out I'm still not entirely over it but this time thankfully I didn't have to go in the hospital and have any treatment done um, but yeah some Sometimes these things happen um, and I can't really make videos and all that sort of stuff which sucks but hopefully you guys understand that and can sort of accept that sometimes you might have to go a weekend a week or something like that without videos when my health condition sort of hits me and it's not a good time so that's basically what's happened over the past few days sorry for no uploads but we are still on the push i don't know if we're going to be able to hit i wanted to hit 10k subscribers by the end of the month not sure that's going to be possible now because i've had to have a bit of time off which sucks but we will push for it we're heading towards 10k nice and steadily so i'm fine with that um yeah thanks for all the support all that good stuff that is going to be the end of the video so if you did enjoy be sure to leave a like subscribe all that good stuff and i'll catch you in the next one goodbye